guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about memorization. Of course, I am doing this at a very opportune time. Finals are over, you guys are done with school. So I thought, you know, this is the best timing for this video possible. Today I'm going to be talking about all the memorization techniques that have worked for me. So let's get right into it. My first recommendation is when choosing resources to memorize off of, Make sure you're using more dense resources as opposed to ones filled with lots of random details and fluff. And the reason for that is if you choose to study off of those fluff filled resources, your brain will recognize that all of that information isn't that important and will start to auto tune out things, even things that you should be memorizing. On the other hand, if you study those more dense resources, your brain will not have those lapses in which you skip out on important details because your brain knows everything here is important. And if for some reason you have to study from bloated resources, then I highly recommend if you're memorizing from that to make condensed notes of those resources and memorize from those. My next tip is to visualize things whenever possible. And this could be more abstract or it could be more grounded as long as it helps you memorize what you need to know. For example, if you're trying to memorize something in chemistry, like if the PI is greater than the pH, then the protein will have a positive charge or whatever. Instead of just memorizing that fact for what it is, try to visualize it. For this example and for chemistry in general, I like to imagine a beaker and everything interacting in that beaker, like the molecules and whatnot, to create whatever effect it does. So for this example, the pH is lower than the PI, which means that there's a lot of acid. Low pH means lots of H pluses in my beaker. And if you imagine that there's a lot of H plus ions in this beaker because the pH is low, you can kind of imagine those H pluses transferring that positive charge to the protein or whatever. So you have a positively charged protein. And even if that's not what happens in real life, as long as you visualize it and it makes sense, you're much more likely to memorize it successfully. So rather than memorizing that random fact and having that fact stored in my brain, I just kind of recall it by imagining what's in the beaker. So PI is greater than the pH, so pH is pretty low, low pH, lots of acid, positive charge. That's basically how I do it. My next tip is to actively think of the information you're trying to memorize in different ways, whether that's recalling things in a different order or trying instead of going from A to B, trying to go from B to A. Even something like breaking down something you're trying to memorize into Greek and Latin roots. Basically playing with the information in as many ways as possible. Similarly, you want to relate the information you're learning to how you feel about it. So you want to have emotions about anything you're learning, whether it's molecules, uh, microbiology bugs, really anything. So try to make feelings about everything you're learning, even some random molecule or gene. So for example, for P53, which normally acts in the human body to help prevent cancer, you can kind of think, thank God for P53 because it helps prevent cancer in me. Next, you want to connect what you're learning to what you already know and do that over and over again. For example, if you're learning about the frog heart, you want to keep making the comparisons back to the human heart. So rather than memorizing things from scratch over and over again, like different hearts and different organisms, you're basically using one base and modifying that a little for each organism. I should mention that there are a lot of memorization techniques like the method of loci and other techniques to memorize things quickly. And I personally don't use those, I've tried them, but the reason I don't like those is it takes a little bit of effort to get the information and I'd rather have the information readily available by just memorizing it and in front of me so I can use it and apply it however I want. With some of these techniques, you're kind of using some effort and brain power just to get the information. So it's harder to take that next step and apply it. There are some tricks like acronyms I think are amazing at getting information right in front of you really fast. So some techniques do work and maybe some of these quick techniques are better in medical school when you need to know a lot more information and maybe with a little less depth than at least I needed in college where I had less information but I needed to apply it more. So all of those are my most effective techniques that have worked for me in memorizing everything I need to know. Of course, most of all, what you still need to do is take the time and energy to just sit down and basically look at things for a long time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out some of my other videos. They should help with school. 
Uh, of course, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.